In Russia, hundreds of thousands of men, would-be conscriptees, are on the run. Putin's new draft has men abandoning their homes and, in some cases, their families in order to avoid fighting a war against Ukraine that they do not support. CNN's Ivan Watson is in Kazakhstan right now, where 200,000 Russians have arrived just this week looking for refuge. Russians abandoning their homeland. Russian President Vladimir Putin's order to conscript men to fight in his war in Ukraine has created an exodus of Russian draft dodgers. They line up daily here in neighboring Kazakhstan to register with the local authorities. The Kazakh government says more than 200,000 Russians fled to this country in less than two weeks. Uh, yes, we ran away from Russia. Vadim and Alexei fled Moscow last week to oh. escape the draft. We don't want this war, and uh, we not recognize our, of our position, our government. Many of Russia's land borders choked for weeks with long lines as citizens run for the exits. Draft dodgers traveling by land wait days in line or pay big money for scarce plane tickets to escape. And that's just the first step. Every day, more Russians arrive at this train station in Almaty with their backpacks, and they all tell you the same thing. They were afraid they could be sent to fight in Ukraine, and they abandoned their country on very short notice. This married couple left together. Did you come because of the mobilization for the war in Ukraine? It was a final kick to start our journey, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were you, were you afraid that you would have to go fight in the war? Yeah, it's not something I want to participate in. The flood of new arrivals surprising local business owners, like the operator of a co-working space in the center of Almaty. This gentleman just walked in. Is this unusual to see? Very usual. Every day is like this. They come in with huge suitcases because they couldn't find a place for living, and they come in here for working and sitting and, you know, looking for, uh, for some, you know, accommodation. These are fresh arrivals from yeah, Russia, yeah, yeah. arriving so with still, a backpack yes. on their back. In this city, hundreds of miles from the Russian border, I spoke with dozens of newly arrived Russians, ranging from doctors. If we refuse to go to this war, we should go to the jail. To engineers, IT specialists, and university students. You ran away from Russia. Yeah, from mobilization, from uh, from military service. Yeah, yeah. Most don't want to be identified to protect loved ones still in Russia. How can I take part in the war without a wish to win this war? This man says Putin's draft left him no other choice but to flee the country, leaving his wife and child behind. We do not trust our government. We do not believe in what they say. He says a Russian government crackdown on dissent has made protesting futile, leaving hundreds of thousands of men now suddenly adrift, trying to find work and accommodation in foreign countries. I am the citizen of the country that started that war. I do not support this war, never did. But somehow I'm still connected with the state because of my passport. And I am at the same time a refugee and the aggressor. Russians on the run, sharing a collective sense of hopelessness and guilt over the destruction caused by their government. Now, Jake, it's not just individuals that are fleeing. I'm, I'm hearing from Russians that I'm talking to here in Almaty that uh, they're saying that their bosses have been sending them across border, that uh, in some cases this appears to be the, the corporate policy of some Russian companies to send their employees out to also help them escape the draft. And all of this shows us that there is uh, some serious lack of faith uh, and credibility in the current policies, the war policies of the Kremlin. Jake? All right. Ivan Watson in Kazakhstan, thank you so much. Here in the United States, Russians are beginning to seek asylum to avoid Putin's draft. Earlier this week, two Russian men arrived by boat in Alaska. They apparently departed from Egvechkinath, Russia. They crossed the uh, Burling Strait. They landed on Alaska's St. Lawrence Island. 
The men were transported to Anchorage to be processed by U.S. immigration. They're asking to stay here in the United States in hopes of avoiding compulsory military service. The Russian embassy in Washington is planning to speak to the two men by phone. Alaska Governor Mike Dunleavy says he does not anticipate a, quote, continual stream of Russians into Alaska.